Nice to see everybody back. Uh, I see some faces that I do recognize, and I see some new faces, which is great. Uh, excuse the accent. You'll have to get used to it. You've got four sessions if you sit the whole lot through. <laughs> right, so tonight we're going to look at seeds from birth to leaving home. Um, now, those who've been to the last two sessions, that's been seeds and germinating and planting seeds and whatever. So we're going to look at a little bit more... Um, of the science of germination of seeds and things like that tonight. Then we go on to the myth or not myth of beneficial and companion planting next week. The week after that, we're going to look at square foot gardening, which is what the, basically this um, community garden is all about, and how to get the most out of your square foot plant and your plot. In other words, looking at things like interplanting, and succession planting, which is you're growing things in between bigger plants, is the interplanting side of it. Succession is as your peas come out of the ground, you're planting another crop, and then you're going to plant your garlic so that it'll go into next year and your chard and whatever, the things that will overwinter. And then the fourth session, which is just after Easter, is a continuation of this, where we're actually going to go take these plants that we've looked at tonight and we're going to plant them out. And we're going to look at soils. We're going to look at soil mechanics. We're going to look at composts, mulches, and things like that. So that it's, it's a sort of continuation so that you get the most out of, hopefully, a small, part, a small plot, but that it's going to give you a big yield. Anyway, so that is a, bean, uh, is a, is a pea seed. I'm sure you all did this experiment at school, didn't you? Where you grew pea seeds? Yep. Right, well, somebody's actually managed to get it on film. So we're going to look at how to get to that point. Uh, but pea seeds don't normally get started inside. They go straight in the ground. And they go into the ground a couple of weeks before the last frost date because they don't mind being cold. Okay, so here we go. Why plant seeds? Why not go down to the nursery, Scott's nursery or whoever, and buy seedlings that somebody's started already? Lovely, because they are very, very good generally. But it's cheaper to grow your own. You can also decide what types you want to grow. You want a specific type of tomato that they're not necessarily growing at Scott's Nursery or one of the you know, Kent stores or whatever. You want Kosovo. Kosovo is a wonderful tomato. It grew through all the blight last year for me and it's a heritage seed. It's one of the ones that Andrea, do you remember Andrea from last year? Berry, Andrea Berry from Hope Seeds? She sells Kosovo seeds. I blessed her last year. Everybody else has got blight. I didn't have blight. Yes! So, heritage versus hybrids. F1 hybrids. They're not GMO as such. But from time immemorial, we have been modifying plants to suit our needs. The Romans grew red wheat. We have improved that red wheat, okay? But we haven't genetically modified it with all these horrible chemicals that people use today. But we have been improving stuff as we go along. But let's not get into the GMO debate. I don't hold with GMO. I don't like what's happening. But heritage seeds are the ones that are tried and true. Giant Musselboro leeks have been going since my grandmother's time. And they are probably the easiest leak to grow. Hybrids, F1 hybrids, if you're going to seed save at the end of the year, you're going to let some of these plants go to seed, don't try it with F1 hybrids because often they will come back to the original or they are sterile. So don't, if you're going to try and seed save, seed save, get your heritage varieties and use them. Okay, where to get them? CD Saturday, March the 17th. And then viability. Whoops, sorry. Viability means that seeds will grow. Now, lots of people keep seeds for years and years and years, and they think, all right, are these seeds actually going to grow? A lot of seed can last up to five years, so long as you store it properly. You store it in the dark, and it's got to be kept cool. In fact, Mel Bartholomew suggests you use a refrigerator. He wants you to keep it at uh, just about 2 degrees centigrade if you're going to keep your seeds. 
pack them in packs, put them in a glass jar, seal the jar, put it in your fridge. If you've got space. I haven't got space in my fridge. <laughs> so I put them upstairs in a, in a fairly cool spot. But you can keep most seeds, except corn and onions, shall, well, any of the onion family. Um, carrots don't last all that well either. So corn, carrots, and onions don't last too well. For, but to check viability, in other words, whether things will germinate, take ordinary paper towel, take 10 seeds, wet your paper towel, fold it over, put your seeds on the paper towel, fold it over, put it in a plastic bag, and put it somewhere fairly warm. And then check your germination schedules. Um, they're on those website, they're on a website there. And you'll see within three to 21 days, whichever seeds you're looking at, um, you will see that you're getting a germination and you'll be able to see what sort of percentage germination you're going to get by doing that. And then you can take those little seedlings and plant them into your jiffy pots or your little, I don't know whether you've come across these. This is sphagnum moss. These are called jiffy pellets and they are brilliant. They grow into, I've just wet this one, they grow into something that size, which is sphagnum moss and a certain amount of uh, fertilizer in a mesh situation. You plant your seed in the center of it and you don't keep it in such a big bowl of water. That was just to get it to, to swell up. Um, and the roots will actually grow when they, when they need to. They will grow through that mesh. So you can either plant it on into a jiffy pot. Now these are very good for cucumbers, for instance, because cucumbers don't really like being taken out of the normal sort of pots and moved on. So you grow these and grow your cucumbers in these, put them in a jiffy pot, and that goes straight in the ground when you're ready to transplant. And that's, that's a very, very good way to grow slightly more tricky seeds that don't like being transplanted. So, and this, this is 36 of them, and they cost you $3.26. And that's pretty good going. So that's one thing that we're going to look at. Um, OK, so viability, yeah. So you've got your wet, keep it warm. You can check of that 10 seeds, how many will come up, and then you'll know what your percentage of viability is, and you can check whether your seeds are, are whether you've kept them sufficiently well so that they will continue to germinate. Okay, so that's looking at just at seeds themselves. The top veg seeds to grow indoors. Um, mesclun lettuce, you can actually grow it inside now to eat within five or six weeks. So that's, that's, that's why I did that because it will grow inside and you can actually eat it from inside. You don't have to transplant it. Now, if you're growing onions from seed, you need to plant them now because they need 20 weeks to come to maturity. So you need to plant them now, get them going, and transplant them as you go along. Onions, shallots, leeks, all those sort of things need a very, very long time. Parsley is slow to germinate. It takes up to 21 days to germinate, so get it going now. And again, you can plant parsley inside and keep it inside. It, it will stay inside, and then you can move it out if you want to in, in the summer. But then you can get it. I've got a pot that is about that diameter, and I'm still growing parsley inside at the moment, and, and we're, we're pricking parsley. Um, the other one that is very easy to do is sage. Uh, well, this is the herbs, sage, parsley, and rosemary. I've got inside, and I'm, I'm picking at the moment. So you can keep them inside the whole year long if you want to. Leaf lettuce, um, again, you can actually, I wouldn't start leaf lettuce now, I would start that mid, probably around about mid-April. Broccoli and kale, um, mine are about that size now, so they're good to start. Peppers, oh dear, I have to tell you, that I, I shouldn't be giving this, this talk, because I'm not brilliant about, these, about starting seeds inside. I've been waiting, I've, I've got the kit, I've got the mat, the heating mat, which gets 70 degrees far, uh, center, and it keeps your bottom warm, so you know, it's supposed to grow nice long roots. I've got, my husband made me a light box, where you've got the two fluorescent tubes and they're supposed to be that far from your seeds so that they don't get all leggy, right? I've got the kit, okay. So I'm sitting there this morning, before I came to work, and I'm thinking, come on. I can grow peppers. What's wrong? And I went to the tray that I've got the peppers in, 
And I thought, no, this is, there's something very, very wrong. This is 20, 21 days since I planted them. And they're at the right heat, everything else that goes with it. I couldn't understand. So, okay, stick a finger in, because I've, I've got them in little rows in this flat. I'm thinking, well, either they've damped off, or the seed's not viable, but I checked the viability of the seed, it's brand new seed, because I'm trying to grow hot peppers. Okay. Um, no sign of roots, no sign of seed, no sign of anything. And then it dawned on me. We have had a mouse in the house. We've got an old, old farmhouse. <laughs> and that mouse, when we finally caught him a week ago, was extremely fat. <laughs> He'd had all the pepper seeds out of that flat. I could not find one seed, <laughs> not one seed. So I'm hopeless, you know. Don't, don't take everything I tell, I tell you as absolute gospel, for goodness sake. Okay, so peppers, yes, you can grow them inside. These are actually very good for peppers as well. They, they, they like the, the feel of this. Um, sphagnum moss is quite acid, but peat moss is even more acid. So be careful if you're using peat moss, you actually need to add a little bit of calcium carbonate, in other words, limestone, when you're, when you're, if you're going to use an almost pure peat moss. We'll talk about that in a minute. Chard, you should be getting in now. Fava beans. Does anybody grow fava beans? No? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> they, they're very good to freeze. Yeah, they freeze extremely easily and extremely well. And um, you can dry them, you can freeze them. And fava beans in a white roux sauce with a bit of garlic in them. Oh, yes. <laughs> and fava beans actually have one of the highest protein values in any vegetable. So, yeah. English, uh, for the, those of us that are English, broad beans, if you know what I mean. Yeah, fava beans. Lima beans also. Lima is slightly more difficult to grow. Cucumber, squash, basil, and tomatoes, I wouldn't start now until about this, just after Easter. Um, because they're going to grow quickly, and you're going to need to get them outside quickly. And they might overgrow. They might get too leggy if you're not careful. Okay? Um, but they'll, they'll grow well inside and then they'll transplant. Squash, uh, some people say don't try squash inside. I do. I will start my squashes inside and then <coughs> transplant them. But again, they need something like a jiffy pot. This, this is, you know, it, it, it's degradable. So their, their roots go straight out, out of this. What I do is I actually tear it down the side when I put it out so that they've got more space for the roots to go out. When, when you're actually transplanting. We'll come to that later. Start outside only beans. Um, and wait. I always, always, always plant my beans too soon here. They, it, that soil has got to be warmed up before you plant your beans because they will just rot. If it's slightly wet soil and it's cold soil, the beans will rot. And I always have to do a second planting because I haven't learnt my lesson yet especially pole, pole beans. And pole beans like to be trenched, they like to be really deep and really, really good food. And then they will go sky high. They'll go eight foot, nine foot high. And then they'll really, they'll, they'll reward you. Peas, you can plant before the last frost. Last frost in this area is run about May the 15th, May the 20th, depending on. Last year, of course, it was horrible. And it was really, really wet. This year, the forecasts, I've read one forecast, which is the Old Farmer's Almanac, saying we're going to have a horrible, cold, wet spring. Um, Environment Canada seems to think, you know, we're going to have quite a nice spring. We've already had signs of spring. And we're going to have a really good weekend this weekend, apparently. And uh, the Weather Network seems to think sort of somewhere in between the two. So your choice is as good as mine, I don't know. <laughs> Radishes, straight into the ground, and you're going to plant those with carrots, because your carrots take too long to germinate, you can't remember where you planted your carrot rows unless you're very clever and you put your sticks in or whatever you're going to use. Put your radishes on top of your carrots or mix them in with your carrot seed. Radishes will be gone, they'll be up, gone, before your carrots have actually started growing sufficiently. And you've got, A, the space that you've saved by using the two together, and you've got where your carrot lines are. Parsnips. Um, now, parsnip is another seed that doesn't last more than about a year, two years. So if you're going to buy parsnip seed, try and share it with somebody because not everybody eats an awful lot of parsnips. But of course, they do store terribly well in the winter. 